I want you to go into the garden. Where do I get the feeling that I'm going into the garden? We must help Emmett. Well, how is my going into the garden helping Emmett? Because he's so shy, poor dear. Now look, I know he's dying to offer me a role in the boyfriend, but he just can't pluck up the courage. I think he's got people for all the parts already. Now, you go out into the garden, and when you spot him, give me a signal, and I'll start to sing. <laughs> <laughs> what signal? Oh, point or something. <laughs> or what at? At anything. Point up in the air. Say, oh, look, there's a bluebird. There aren't any bluebirds. Well, blackbirds, then. Please don't make difficulties, Richard. Oh. Well, you should tell her. She never listens. Hyacinth is a talker, not a listener. You must face up to her fairly and squarely. I tried that. I told her the other morning in the middle of that excruciating coffee session. The one you couldn't make, sister dear. <laughs> Hyacinth, I said. Hyacinth, my production of the boyfriend is already fully cast. That was very brave. Mm. What did she say? She gave me one of her smiles, slipped me a parsnip and rhubarb biscuit. <laughs> And then asked me whether I'd seen her pictures of Sheridan when he came first in his dance class. <laughs> Have you seen them? No, thank heavens. Oh, they're worth a look. Poor Sheridan. Yeah, he never really stood a chance. Show me your signal, Richard. <laughs> Is the coast clear? Well, there's just Richard behaving very strangely. Poor <laughs> <laughs> oh, chaps finally flipped. <laughs> and who can blame him? I'm amazed he didn't flip years ago. <laughs> Good morning, Emmett. Uh, oh, look, uh, a blackbird. <laughs> oh, look, another. <laughs> oh, Violet, you know you can confide in me. You're getting fed up with whose company? Bruce's? Oh, well, that's only natural. He's your husband. <laughs> oh, yes, they do get tiresome. <laughs> what you need is another dimension to your lifestyle. Yes, perhaps you should entertain a little more. Mm, give a little swurry. <laughs> I could come along and bring some socially acceptable guests. Yes. 
Oh, don't get alarmed, Violet, dear. We can keep it quite simple. A little caviar, champagne, and cut glass fingers. <laughs> Slow. Where did we first make love? <laughs> did you repeat the question? Where did we first make love? It made such an impression on you, you can't even remember it. I can remember when we last made love. Just. <laughs> Why is father standing in the bucket? <laughs> is he standing in the bucket? Just standing there with both feet in the bucket. Is he quiet? Yes. So leave him alone. Get yourself another bucket. I don't want a bucket. So why do you care if father standing in a bucket? I wish I'd never asked. Why didn't you come out when I signalled? I was on the telephone. Oh, I've nothing to wear. <laughs> well, you've missed Emmett. Oh, you can forget all about that now. What? We shall invite Elizabeth and Emmett to go with us tonight to Violet's. Are we going to Violet? Yes, Richard. For a superlative summer evening with my well-heeled sister. Oh. <laughs> Caviar, champagne, quail's eggs, cut glass finger bowls. Ooh. <laughs> Rose cooking breakfast. I shouldn't think so. Well, if Rose is cooking breakfast, it smells very funny. It was in that bush shelter in Milton Street. <laughs> <laughs> what was? Where we first made love. <laughs> no, it wasn't. We never needed a bus that went past Milton Street. I was sure I had a boyfriend that needed a bus that went past Milton Street. Well, it wasn't me. It's not an empty bucket. What's in it? Horse manure. <laughs> Ask a simple question. Father is standing barefoot in a bucket of horse manure. Why would he do that? Maybe he lost his slippers. <laughs> I knew it didn't smell like breakfast. for a pony. <laughs> you must bring Emmett. <laughs> we shall have a superlative summer evening. Caviar, champagne, quail's eggs, smoked salmon parcels. Nothing too formal. <laughs> Just something tasteful with hand engraved cut glass finger bowls. <laughs>
it. Oh, I don't think Emmett will be able to come, Hyacinth. Hmm? Oh, he will when he knows I'll be there. <laughs> well, I'm not even certain I can get word to him. You see, he's rehearsing all day at the church hall. Oh, don't worry about that, dear. We'll catch you there. <laughs> well, I, I don't know that that's a fry, but I could help Emmett drill his cast. <laughs> It'd be nice for him to have someone to lean on. Oh, I'm sorry. How did that get in there? <laughs> <laughs> More than most people would pay, but then accidents will happen. Rather too frequently, unfortunately. <laughs> Should we really be interrupting Emmett's rehearsals? And that's been worrying me, too. Oh, Emmett won't mind if it's me. Emmett and I are bonded by our mutual love of music. Well, I think perhaps we ought to warn him. Call him on the telephone first. That sounds like a very good idea. But there's no phone in the church hall. We'll have to phone the vicarage, and his poor wife will have to take the message over to the hall. I still think it might be the thing to do. but that's my telephone call you're making. I was here first. Please go away, madam. I shan't be a minute. Richard, eject this man. <laughs> Richard, this man's insulted me. Not quite. But it's getting close. <laughs> you obviously overuse the public system. I very rarely use it, as I possess a white slimline telephone with automatic reader. <laughs> A horse like yours. I'm surprised you even need a telephone. <laughs> Richard, come and help me. Harrison, stop that at once and get into the car. <laughs> Sir, in wartime, you'd have got a medal for courage like that. Vicar, a 
Have you ever done this sort of thing? <laughs> Not for some time. University. I'm sure you can remember the old... These are a bit rusty. No, it's good, it's good. It's not, not, not bad at all. <laughs> Why don't you come up here and we'll show them how to do it. <laughs> come on, girls. Go down there and watch. We're perfect young ladies. in a bucket of horse manure. He's giving it a good try. He says it's good for his chillblains. Has he got chillblains? No, so there must be something in it. Where did he get the stuff from anyway? He found it in the street. He's beginning to worry where his next load's coming from. Well, I'm not going out collecting for him. <laughs> now what? <laughs> he may think it's good for his chillblains, but if that's the only medicine he's got faith in, I hope he never gets barber's rash. <laughs> The situation called for firm measures. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. I must say, Richard, there are times when I'm amazed by your impatience and your lack of consideration for other people. My impatience? Yes. Elizabeth was a witness. She heard you raise your voice to me. Well, I've never raised my voice to you before. Well, I think I'll just go and warn him that you're coming. No. We'll surprise him. I think I'd rather be out here when Emmett's surprised. <laughs> Always big smiles. Thank you. 
end. Herself in my brother's rehearsals. Oh, Betty was pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky routine. Oh, <laughs> very tricky. Ready, girls? One, two, three. We're perfect, perfect young, young ladies. ladies. We're perfect. Perfect. What on earth are you doing? Rehearsing. I'm afraid I'm not convinced. Michael, what are you doing under the stage with three girls? Well, it's not just three girls. Emmett's here. He's a single man. Divorce? It's the same thing. Not quite technically, dear. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, look, why are you making such fuss? You think under the stage in the pitch dark with three girls is really appropriate for a vicar? Well, darkness is clerical territory. You're supposed to fight it, not join it. <laughs> Hello? There's a perfectly simple explanation. I know. That's what worries me. Oh, there you are, Emmett. Just when I thought I was in enough trouble. And you too, Vicar. How to find you all together, I have a surprise for you. You're all invited this evening to my sister Violet's. She's the one with the Mercedes, the sauna, and room for a pony. <laughs> now, I want you all there at six o'clock this evening for a bon vivant buffet and our fresco manchettes. <laughs> the weather permitting, of course. We do on soggy volivon, do we? <laughs> now, Richard, I want you to be at your most elegant this evening. I don't do a good elegant. But of course you do, dear. Look who's been training you all these years. <laughs> what about the buffet items? Oh, you can fetch all that in a minute. Yeah! 
This guy you were with in the bus shelter in Milton <laughs> Don't worry about him. You liked him. It's not as if it was somebody you didn't like. Sounds as if you liked him better. <laughs> what do you mean I liked him? He was a friend of yours. Oh, nice. Some friend. It's not as if we were married at the time. Father's gone. Did you know she used to be in a bus shelter in Milton Street with some guy? Only on Fridays. <laughs> what guy? That's what I want to know. What guy? <laughs> what do you mean, father's gone? Oh, he's gone with his bucket looking for another load. Do you mean that uh, shelter at the bottom end of Milton Street? That's the one. <laughs> oh, I've spent some happy hours in that shelter. <laughs> Sounds as though everybody except me spent happy hours in that bus shelter. I think he's jealous. Mind you were always borrowing your bus fare. This looks rather good. Not quite my candlelight supper, but it's certainly elegant. Why are you trying to choke me? I hate you! I can't stand Why don't we just phone round and cancel everybody? Richard, I will not disappoint people. We have friends coming tonight who are expecting a bon vivant buffet and alfresco manchettes. And that's exactly what they're going to receive. But what about the row indoors? It'll quieten down. It'll have to. If it doesn't, we'll drown it out with music. Do we have any music? Don't make difficulties, Richard. Take a positive attitude, dear. I want this evening to be elegant and memorable. Don't do that! I have a feeling it is going to be memorable. <laughs> oh, yes, that's really lovely. An elegant gastronomic delight. Are you on top of the barbecue, Richard? <laughs> I'm getting there. Slowly. You're hitting the carving knife again! And every reason to hide. Carving knife. Did you hear that? Richard, I will not have you eavesdropping on private conversations. You call that private? Get out of my way! Oh, do something, dear. I hate you! Your legs are too short! Wait, I have an idea. I'm going nowhere near them if they're waving carving knives around. We need to be able to drown out their voices. Nor am I contacting the Royal Artillery. <laughs> no. Just go and have a look inside and see if you can find some large sheets of card and a thick pen. What for? Never you mind. Couldn't we have a punch or something? Couldn't the car break down and then we couldn't possibly get there? You promised the vicar you'd come. You're going to give each other mutual support. If I had a brain, you think I'd be married to you? <laughs> there. Well, what are you going to do? Hold it up and hope that Violet and Bruce will surrender? No. We're going to have a barbecue sing-song. 
Surely you can understand anyone hiding from the bucket woman. <laughs> yes, of course I can. What I can't understand is why you felt you needed the moral support of three attractive young ladies. You're the one with the mouth. You really think this is going to work? I say makes sense. It will have been so loud enough. That's probably Elizabeth and Emmett. Or at least it's quiet at the moment. They'll be in each other's arms. Looking for the jugular. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth and Emmett. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our barbecue. With the unique sing-for-your-supper speciality. Oh, no. She's not going to sing. <laughs> Tell me she's not going to sing. I must say the buffet looks lovely, Hyacinth. Thank you, dear. Um, how does the singing side of the evening work? Oh, it's a party game based on an idea originally conceived by Henry VIII for his banquets. <laughs> how interesting. Yes, fascinating. Yes, it's perfectly simple. Whenever I pick up one of these cards, then everyone sings the song it names. I know! I'm just better than... Rule! Britannia! Britannia rules the waves! Britannia never, never, never shall be saved! We can sing up their rule! Britannia! Britannia rules the waves! Britannia never, never, never shall be you as a preliminary nibble. Do you think she has any suicide pills? <laughs> Behave yourself. Oh, hello again, Vicar. How nice to see you and your good lady. Good evening, Mrs. Bucket. Okay. <laughs> do relax and enjoy yourselves. Why do you go that funny colour? That, oh. That's to life with you. There. Oh. <laughs> game, Vicar. You'll soon get the hang of it. <laughs> Richard will soon have the hot food ready, won't you, dear? But in the meantime, do help yourself to my ancillary items. Thank you, Hyacinth. Don't bite me there! No one's biting me there! <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. Now, do help yourselves. I don't want to take it all home again. It all has to be eaten. Oh, dear. 